That is a creepy little intro there. Wow. I am learning all the sound effects on this thing. Hello, anyway. My name is Christian, and welcome to my podcast. I guess this is a podcast. I started doing this because a lot of people were telling me, oh, you should do a podcast. You should do a podcast. Yeah, it's great to do a podcast. Do a podcast. Ah, Do a podcast. Well, here I am. I'm doing a podcast. Uh, Seems like it's something that everybody's doing now. Um, Seems like it's something that uh, a lot of people are using to communicate with a lot of people. Um, So I'm very excited to be uh, taking you all on this journey. The name of the podcast is obviously Comedy Therapy with Christian. Uh, you clicked on it, clearly you saw the name. Uh, you clicked or you you touched or, or whatever device you're using to listen to this. And so this is going to be a journey. Um, I'm going to go into it, explain a little bit about, you know, why I'm doing this, uh, what my goals are with this, and what exactly I hope to accomplish. Um... So first off, you know, this episode is going to be a little different than how I'm going to, or how I'm planning to run the rest of this podcast. So basically, I call this one, this one's called Syllabus Week. Uh, For those of you college-educated folk, um, as you know, Syllabus Week, nothing really happens. You just kind of lay out the groundwork. So we're going to lay out the groundwork here. Um, so many people have always told me, Christian, you have such a great radio voice. You should be using it. And people have also told me that I have such a great radio face as well. So, oh, wow. I'm going to give myself a laugh track for that one. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, everybody's laughing. Yay. Hey, exciting. Wait, you can't look because it's a podcast and you're listening. So. The name of this thing is called Comedy Therapy. Um, Comedy is something that has been an integral part of my life for a very, very long time. Um, And from as early as I can remember, I, let's see, I must have been six or seven years old. And I think it was Ace Ventura Pet Detective that I watched. And I just watched it, and my eyes were opened wide. Jim Carrey's humor was the only kind of humor you can understand as, like, a six- or seven-year-old. And I watched it. My eyes were opened wide, and I'm like, wait a minute. I love laughing, and these people, there are people out there that can make me laugh, and they, they choose to make me laugh. So the idea is here, I want to help people laugh a little bit more. I think that there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world right now. Um, And there's not really that much laughter going on anymore. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. But I feel like people just need to start laughing again. And and my job, my, my goal here is to hopefully, you know, through the course of like a half an hour maybe sometimes an hour on a longer episode, is take you through uh, a journey and and just make you laugh for a little while. Whether you're coming back from work, driving to work, whether you're working out, doing, you know, whatever it is, things that I don't do, um, I hope that you are able to smile a little bit and laugh because I, I really think that that's something that we all need to do a little bit more of because I love laughing. I crack myself up. Don't know if I can crack up a lot of people, but um, it's called comedy therapy because I I truly believe that laughter is the best medicine. Um, If I was ever down about something in my life, I would always, my coping mechanism was never something standard of like, you know, crying or, or anything. My immediate coping mechanism that I would turn to is I would put a sitcom on and I would watch a sitcom and that would just make me it would just make me feel at home um and then I got involved in stand-up when I was 16 wow 
Uh, so I guess that's oh boy, that's a long. That's almost seven years. You have five years, what six years, whatever. I cannot do math. So I started when I was sixteen, um, and it was something that I just loved so much. There, there's a feeling on stage that I get that I I just have yet to experience in any other area of life. Um, and you hear a lot of comedians talk about that, but you know, for me, I'm hoping to bring it to a to a more personal level for a more personal audience because you know I am not a famous comedian, obviously. Um, I enjoy comedy and I do stand up, and I haven't really been involved with it. Uh, I kind of lost a little bit of touch with it in college, but now I am go and pedal to the metal every single day writing new bits and everything and just waiting to get back out there uh waiting to return to the world of stand-up uh so all that aside we're gonna we're gonna just get into some stuff i'm gonna lay out a little bit more what's going on uh i also love to talk about movies as well and television um and so that's gonna be the idea here and This podcast is not just going to be me. I've spoken to a couple people who already want to come on and they want to uh, just be here for conversation, whether it's talking about movies or we talk about observations or whatever. Um, So that's going to be great. And and so there's a lot to look forward to with that. And this episode is the most serious that I'm going to be. Well, I just kicked my mic there. That was real professional. Um This episode is the most serious that I'm going to be. Um, I believe that life is too short for you not to laugh. I'm only being serious here because I'm laying everything out for you. It's syllabus week, okay? It's syllabus week. So the structure that I have right now that I'm going for is every episode I'm going to open up, maybe do 10 15, 20 minutes up front talking about just observations and just like material that I've been noticing because I notice a lot of stuff and there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about that I just want to get out there. That there are just some things that just frustrate. I live down in D.C. and D.C. people are just weird. Um, You know, like in New York, people are known to be rude and in a rush and in L.A., people are known to be very laid back because they're all smoking pot or something. I don't even know. But in D.C., people are just weird. Like this morning, I was on my, my one, which I call the walk-run, uh, because I don't walk the entire time and I don't run the entire time. I'm fit to do neither all at once. I don't even know if that made any sense. But I was on my one this morning, and... I saw a guy spoon-feeding a squirrel. I kid you not, I cannot make this shit up. This guy was spoon-feeding a squirrel. And I just said, that is great, because today I'm starting the podcast, and it's things like that that open my eyes. That I just go, what the hell is going on here? I didn't even know what he was feeding this thing. I didn't know how the thing was behaving. I thought I was on some kind of other planet where squirrels behave and they're not writhing around every two seconds. So that was a little strange. Um, but it's things like that, that there's uh, there's a lot of material that I notice every day. So I'm going to open up talking about stuff like that. Then I'm going to go into talking about like movies. All right, and we'll do we'll do a little bit of it today. Um, and then also television. Television's a little bit harder because there's so much out there to watch, and it's a real investment to watch a lot of TV. Nowadays, in, in the streaming days, and, you know, with, with uh, you know, all this binge-watching and stuff going on, I've never been a big binge-watcher. I can binge-watch sitcoms, like I said, sitcoms, um, but I can't really... Binge watching is a little hard unless I'm super into something. Um, so that's what we're going to hopefully talk about. We're going to get to uh, movies and television again, just entertainment in general. Something I'm going to try and stay away from on this podcast 
is politics. Uh, and I'll explain why. Today's going to be the most I'm going to talk about politics because it's syllabus week. Um, politics is something, obviously, if you have a pulse, you know that it is extremely polarizing these days. No matter what side you fall on, no matter what I say about politics, no matter what side it is, somebody's going to jump down my throat. Somebody's going to tell me, Oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. I believe this. I believe this. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to talk about that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is avoid politics as much as I can. Because like I said, politics is actually what's causing a lot of people not to laugh anymore. Because everybody's taking things so seriously. So my job is to get you away from that. So, again, we're going to do observations, we're going to do movies, we're going to do television, um, and we're going to, like I said, I want to have guests on a lot. I want to, you know, have different people come on and talk about different perspectives in life. Um, you know, for me, again, I'm being very serious today, but the next podcast will not trust me. Um, I've struggled with anxiety and depression my uh, a larger chunk of my life. I'm very open about it, and I will be very open about it on this show, and it's something that I encourage people to be open about uh, if you're not, because it is such a relieving feeling once you open open up that door and you say, hey, yes, I struggle with this, and I'm very open to talking about it. And so if I've, been, I've been in therapy for many years, uh, since I was seven years old. And if this stuff, if me putting this out here costs me some kind of social status that is non-existent, or if it costs me a job because I'm admitting I have anxiety and depression, I don't give a fuck, okay? Because I'm just going to talk. And that's the other thing. I'm going to curse on here. Um... I don't mean to do it on purpose. I, you know, it's just how it is. This is real life, folks. This is going to be, I don't like bullshit. I don't like, you know, putting facades up. I'm just, I'm going to curse and I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to try and purposely work it into every podcast, but that's just who I am. If you know me, you know, I, I throw the occasional F-bomb in there all the time. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? So I don't care if being open about anxiety costs me anything because, you know, this is just who I am and I've accepted that this is who I am. It's been a curse in my life, but it's also been one of the greatest blessings of my life. It was where my first little bit of material came from when I started in comedy uh, because my anxiety used to be very obsessive-compulsive uh, things. Um, I was a germaphobe for a very long time um, and I did exposure therapy that helped me get over that uh, and, you know, so I was eating off of dirty dishes and, you know, just like rolling around in the hay on the farm. Um, I don't know why I just went into a Southern accent on that, but I did. Um, speaking of accents, I'm from New York, so my accent's going to slip in every so often. Especially when I get frustrated and I start to rant about something, you're going to hear it come out. Um, anyway, but, yeah, I did exposure therapy because I had OCD. Um, and I used to do all these jokes about like, oh, you know, I joined an OCD support group and, you know, we went in and once we left, we were all back five minutes later because we all thought we left something in the room. You know, it was jokes like that. Very simple, you know, set up uh, premise punchline jokes. Now I'm really trying to get back into it and, and really expand. But the anxiety gave me a great gift to be able to talk about OCD. I used to joke about how I was trapped in a bathroom for like three hours because some guy who was before me didn't wash his hands and touch the doorknob and how I couldn't touch it. I used to do jokes like that. Um, and they were fun and I enjoyed it. But the thing about comedy is once something is not in your life anymore, you don't feel it. It's not as significant anymore. And since, you know, my obsessive compulsive stuff really isn't relevant anymore and I got over it, you know, you don't feel it with the same passion that you once felt it when you were telling those jokes. Um, so 
basically, like I said, exposure therapy, the graduation from that, you know, my therapist was like, why don't you go uh, roll around on the floor in a bathroom, a uh, public bathroom? And I'm like, I ain't doing that. But uh, as much as I would love to, I ain't doing it. Um, so, like I said, enough about my history. Enough, that's not what you're here for. You're here to listen to me rant about things uh, and talk about things. Um, so let's just, I mean, we'll get into, oh, also, uh, other piece, the schedule for this, my, my goal right now is to do this twice a week, is to do this on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm hopefully doing this at three o'clock. Um, I am pre-recording this episode and I'm going to pre-record the first couple just to make sure that they get out, uh, before I start doing live streams. Uh, I will be doing live streams, but this one I'm recording in the morning, um, and this is going to go up uh, later today at 3 o'clock. Um, but my idea is, you know, Tuesday and Thursday. I know I'm starting this on a Wednesday. Uh, I'm hoping to do another episode tomorrow as opposed to waiting until next Tuesday to just start the cycle, but uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to um, to do twice a week and, and and that's the goal um so yeah i just uh i love talking about comedy i love talking to people about funny things and i love uh sorry my chair keeps squeaking and that has got to be extremely obnoxious i'm using a microphone that is very intense and it's picking up every single little sound in the room if, if, if you hear a humming it's my refrigerator um I can't really do anything about that because I don't want my food to go bad. Um, so basically, uh, like I said, Tuesday and Thursday. So this way, so none of you go, yeah, hey, how often is the show going to go on? It's Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let me get back to this guy with the squirrel. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking, right? And I do my walk. In the morning, I start off walking, and then I'll I'll move up to a jog when I'm kind of out of my area. Once I'm a little bit for once I'm like a mile in, that's why nobody recognizes me because when I run, it looks like an ostrich trying to do a flamenco dance. It's actually one of the worst sights you'll ever see watching me run. Um, it's horrible. It's atrocious. But so I'm going, I'm going. It's, it was a little chilly out this morning, but it's good. You, you know, you pump up the blood, gets going, it gets good. Um, so essentially, I'm running, and I see this guy, and he's crouched down. And this this guy's wearing like I don't even know. He was wearing this this long like parka jacket and jeans and like work boots, and he had like a like a safari hat on I I am not I am not making this up I can't that's the other thing I'm not gonna lie about things on this show I'm just not I'm not a liar I'm a truther um so this guy's just crouching down and he's got like this paper spoon I'm like thank god it's paper he's not gonna go actually go home and take this spoon back and put it in the washer machine with the rest of his stuff. And then some poor nephew comes over. And he's like, yeah, well, that was the one that I served to the squirrel that day. No. Okay. So thank God it was paper. Um, so I'm looking at this guy. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong Wrong here? What is going on? And the squirrel is just like nibbling away. Like, like nibbling at this. I don't even know what he had. Was he feeding him the spoon because it's a fucking squirrel and maybe it'll just eat anything in its path? Or maybe you should stay away from the squirrel because they have fucking rabies. So that's a possibility. Um, I paid no mind. Oh, well, clearly I did pay mind because I wanted to bring it up uh, here on Comedy Therapy with Christian. On the debut episode We're about 20 minutes in already Wow, time really flies when you're talking I love to talk I don't shut the hell up If, if any of you out there know me You know that I don't shut the hell up um, 
So, yeah, so I saw that. My allergies have really been killing me. It's it's like, it's horrible out there. Um, and I don't know, like, I've just had this scratching, like, in my throat. And I'm like, all right, is this just like one of those pre-sinus infection, you know, scratching in the throat? Or is it, you know, more of a... Uh, you know, allergy thing. And I think it's clearly an allergy because the throat hasn't gotten worse. Um, so this is definitely allergies. Um, I don't know why I'm bringing that up. You you people are, you're my therapist right now. You all are my therapist. This is therapy for me. And I also hope it's therapy for you. Um, so basically... Oh, I got so much I got to talk about here. Uh, sometimes you need to find material. Sometimes you need to, you know, a lot of comedians will carry around a book and, you know, just because you notice stuff every day. You have to be willing to put yourself into uncomfortable situations. That's why half the time when I go out, you know, or or like, you know, I go to a bar or something. I don't fucking care about the bar. I don't drink. And I'm just like, I'm here for material. And you will find plenty of stuff. I will go down to Starbucks some days and just sit down there. And you would not believe the amount of just mutated people, otherwise known as mutants, walking into this place. And and I always feel bad because, like, i got to order something when I go down to Starbucks, right? So I go down, and, you know, everybody's wearing their, their gardening cap and, and behind the counter, and everybody's talking, like, hello. Well, how are you doing? Ah. Like, they're having the whole conversation with themselves. I haven't even said anything at this point. And it does kind of look like they're gardening back there. They're always bending over for stuff. They're always reaching for stuff. Oh, you want this? Oh, you want that? I want the food that's in the case right here. Why can't you take this out of the case? Where are you reaching down under to take out my little egg McMuffin from... Oh, that's McDonald's. That's not... I don't know what they have. It's like a sausage, some shit. Um, So... You walk in, you do the whole rigmarole, but you sit down and you realize that all of a sudden everybody gets this fake sense of authority when they're at Starbucks. Like you sit there and I'll overhear people's conversations. I'll fucking eavesdrop. I don't care. I'm living my life. And I'll sit there and I'll be just, you know, on my computer doing aimless activities or looking for jobs or something like that. And you you just hear all of a sudden everybody feels qualified, like they're able to give advice when they're at Starbucks. And it's only when they're in Starbucks. Some people, if I want to catch up with them, will only meet me in Starbucks because they feel like that's the place that they can give me advice. That I don't know what it is that when you walk in there, all of a sudden... Everybody who you knew who was the most normal person in the world is all of a sudden sitting there. They cross their legs all, you know, presidential style. And they're giving advice, all of them. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's it's just a little strange. And so you just, you notice and you pick up on little behaviors of people. Little behaviors, the amount of phony this this whole superior like atmosphere that goes on in there and everybody's like who well, you know when i when i first got into marketing i i you know i had to network a lot and talk to some of the people that i went to school with and if you stay in touch with your alumni association you should be able to network and find yourself a job but if you sit here right now and you talk to me i will tell you how i found a job i don't even know what accent that was uh but it sounded funny so that's why i did it um anyway uh sorry if that's just blew out everybody's ears 
I don't even know how many people are listening. There's probably two fucking people. Um, if that, maybe one and a half. It's, I mean, I don't know. Uh, so, the other thing that happened, I was on my one, my one this morning. Uh, and uh, I can spot from a mile away. This isn't just because I'm a New Yorker, okay? This is ingrained in my soul. I spotted from like a mile away someone was walking extremely slow. And I'm telling you, this guy was at least a half a mile ahead of me. At least. And I can just see how slow he's walking. And it's on a sidewalk, okay? So you know, inevitably, that as you get up, and I was speed walking at this point. I wasn't running. You know that eventually you're going to catch up because you are going fast. They are going slow. You know you're going to catch up. And you know you're going to be faced with that awkwardness of how do I get around them? Because because this guy was standing right down the middle line in the sidewalk. So it was he was not staying in his lane. It was not because if he was in his lane, I would no have have no problem passing him. Or I could just walk right into the street and make a huge turn around him. But that's so noticeable. So. I see him from like half a mile away and I'm like, all right, I'm like, Christian, you're never going to catch up to him. It's going to be fine. You're doing your pace. It's not going to stress you out. You're going to be okay. And so I'm walking, I'm walking and this guy's getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, ah, fuck. I'm going to get stuck behind this guy. And I did. And I got upset. I may have screamed something. I don't think I did. I I actually don't remember. Um, But I may have screamed something. I may have huffed and puffed. Didn't blow the house down, but I huffed and I puffed. Um, Because this guy had no reason to be walking slow. All right, I give people passes. If you're an old person, walk as slow as you want. I don't care. If you have some kind of handicap, I don't care how slow you're walking. If you're a kid, I don't care how slow you're walking. Those are, you're totally fine to walk at whatever pace you want. But when you have your phone in your hand, And that is all that you're focused on is sending whatever text to whoever the sorry soul is that's receiving that text. When you're doing that, you best be speeding the fuck up. Because I cannot, I don't take my phone out when I'm walking places because it's dangerous, A, because you're not watching where you're walking. It's just like people who text while you're driving. Now watch them while you're driving. Why should you why should you text while you walk? Just why should you? I want to know the answer. My phone is never out when I'm walking. I well, my phone is hardly ever out. I've become so mindful of living in the present moment with people. A little over a year ago. I discovered Do Not Disturb on the iPhone. And my phone has been on Do Not Disturb since. It is so freeing, not feeling beeps and, and or feeling vibrations from your phone or your watch and or you're hearing a beep because that would just make me anxious. And it is so freeing just being able to sit there without expecting anything. And when I go on my phone, I go on my phone. Now, sometimes there'll be about eight missed calls from my mother, and that's that's tough to to explain. That's tough to get over. But um, and there are situations where I'll turn "Do Not Disturb" off, and I'm expecting a food delivery. It'll be off because I'll be expecting a call, and that's not a call you want to miss. If I'm expecting, you know, if I'm making plans with somebody, I'll turn it off and I'll I'll text or. Maybe if I'm texting someone interesting, I will text back semi-quickly. Uh, but my average text back time is half an hour. 
because my phone is always on do not disturb. So if anybody, uh, you know, tries to text me, nobody fucking texts me. It's, who am I kidding? Um, but if anybody did try and you were getting frustrated, I'm sorry. I'm on do not disturb and I am living my best life. Living my best life. All right. So we're at the half hour point already. Um, I don't want to keep this thing going too much longer because sometimes when you talk too much, you lose your voice, you lose the interest of your listeners. If I haven't lost the interest of my listeners already. Um, so for the three of you that are probably still listening, um, we're going to talk a little bit about movies. Uh, what I'm going to hope to do is watch at least a new movie every week, um, which I usually do on a regular basis, you know, just for pleasure, uh, regardless. So I'm going to try and do that every week. Right now, if you know anything about me, if you know me, follow me on social media. My favorite movie of the year is this Joker movie that's out right now. It is, I will say it time and time again, it's amazing. Uh Joaquin Phoenix is terrifying in it. He is... It, it's the performance of a lifetime from him. And he's had plenty of fantastic performances. Um, but this movie was something that reminded me of why I love movies so much. Uh, and I've seen it three times. Uh, it's extremely disturbing and upsetting to watch... Uh, but I don't really get thrown by things like that. I, I like to appreciate an art form. Uh, and the movie really is a work of art. It's so much a work of art. It is so beautifully made. Um, and I could not be happier about it. Uh, this weekend, I'm planning on seeing The Irishman. That's the uh, Scorsese movie uh, that's coming out with the, the big guys. De Niro, Pacino, Pesci. Uh so I'm going to check that out. It's about three and a half hours long, so I will be sure to hook up a catheter to myself um, because I'm probably going to have to go to the bathroom no matter how much I drink. Uh, so I'm going to see that. I'm going to hope that that is uh, good. I, I've been hearing nothing but good things about it. I want to see that. What, what the hell else is on my list? Um I want to see that. I want to see this Ford versus Ferrari movie with Matt Damon and Christian Bale, um, two of the best actors in Hollywood. Uh, I want to see this Knives Out movie that Ryan Johnson directed. Um, Ryan Johnson directed the last Star Wars movie, which, you know, that polarized a lot of people. I happen to like the last Star Wars movie. Okay, let me talk about this for a minute. I liked it. Some people whined and bitched and moaned like there was no tomorrow. Just saying, uh, well, Luke, he was such a baby. He was so whiny. He was, uh, well, first of all, Luke was always whiny. You, I, you can't even stand him in A New Hope. He's so annoying. But yes, he becomes a hero at the end of Return of the Jedi. Sorry, spoilers for you folks who have not you know, seen something that came out in 1983. So, sorry. Uh, but The Last Jedi, everybody's like, he's so whiny and he's been through everything. Why doesn't he save the galaxy? Why, why, why isn't he the hero? Because that's not what they've been going for in this series since the beginning. They've been setting up Rey is your hero, okay? Rey is the story that we're all following. And I am damn invested in because I think they've done a good job of getting me to be invested in it. You're supposed to be invested in Rey, Poe, Finn, all those guys. The other old characters are there for, for the gravitas of the movie, the support. And, you know, Luke is there to be a mentor. He's basically... Yoda from Empire Strikes Back. Let me take you back to a movie that came out in 1980. So spoilers are ahead for you folks who haven't seen it. Empire Strikes Back, Yoda was the most powerful Jedi of the old Jedi Order. And Luke goes to him for training because Obi-Wan tells him in a vision, you have to go to Dagobah, uh, go to the Dagobah system and find Yoda. Yoda 
was the most powerful Jedi, and he's strong. Yoda refuses, for a large chunk of that movie, refuses to train Luke. Refuses, because he's so hung up about everything. He feels like he failed. He feels like the Jedi Order, that he was a reason that the Jedi Order fell. And he's living with a lot of guilt. So, fast forward to episode 8, The Last Jedi. Luke is Yoda. He's very disillusioned. He's felt very... ah, What's the word? He's felt... I can't, for lack of a better term, he's felt poorly about himself because he failed. He had one job that he was going to carry the Jedi Order into a new generation. He was going to start the Jedi Order up again. And he failed because one of his apprentices was seduced by the dark side, murdered all the other apprentices, and essentially left Luke to die, but he didn't die. And people had a problem with the fact that Luke was bothered by this. And I didn't. I thought it added so much depth because I'm like, do you really think... Because not only in real life, but the films take place 30 years after the original trilogy, right? So do you think that he's going to be the same character that he was 30 years ago? People change. People get new life experiences. Things change. He's living on an island where he's like milking these weird dinosaur things. He's fucked up. And I bought it. And you know what? He went out in the most badass fucking way. And I thought it was awesome. Everything else in the movie, I agree, was kind of... I, I didn't like the casino, save the animals, and Benicio Del Toro, who's a phenomenal actor, comes in with the guy as the stutter who did... Which I thought was, like, so stupid. So unbelievably stupid. <sighs> Boy. Um... So, essentially, Star Wars is going to be a big conversation. Um, I'm excited about Star Wars. Not thrilled. I haven't gotten extremely pumped. I know it's going to be great, and I'm going to enjoy it. And, of course, I'm going to go see it because it's Star Wars. And I'm just really curious about where they take the story. It looks like Emperor Palpatine is back, so they better have some good explanation for that uh i'm excited to see him i just hope they don't be like yeah he never died that's the reason um i don't know why i keep doing these weird voices people respond to me and let me know if these voices are doing me any good i do voices in case anybody's trying to pick me up for an acting role um so yeah star wars is going to be exciting i want to see that uh that comes. That doesn't come out until next month, though. Uh, although it's getting close, I guess. So we're we're really we're revving up here. Um, the holidays are coming, so it's a good time to start this podcast. Uh, and you know, my history with movies. I guess I'll give you my favorite movie. Favorite movie of all time is The Dark Knight. Uh, it was one of those movies where I was I had never I was ten years old when I saw it, and I had never seen a serious movie before in my life I had seen all comedies up to that point all of them every single one of them and The Dark Knight not only looked like a serious movie it looked fucking terrifying and I was like okay uh so I was on vacation uh my mother and I used to go to Cape Cod it was one of those dreary like pouring rainy days and so what do you do on a rainy day even if you're on vacation you go to the movies um it was raining like the whole day so my mom's like let's check out this dark night thing and i just remember being so excited so on the edge of my seat and it opened up a world to me that i was like this is a movie you know it changed my life. And Christopher Nolan is now my favorite director. Every one of his movies makes me open my eyes and go, wow, what a genius this man is. Um, so, it, you know, Dark Knight was the movie for me that really set my passion for movies in motion. 
I hope to be involved in movies someday. I love to edit. Uh, I love production. Uh, I worked in news for a little bit, and I hated it. Um, so I, I wound up leaving that job. Uh, because I'm a creative person. I, I like creative things. Doing things like a podcast, for instance. Um, so, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, I think... What movie was I talking about? Dark Knight. Dark Knight was just something that opened up my eyes to a lot of things. Um, and I loved it. Uh, TV show, um, I go to, I separate TV shows into two categories. I do comedy and drama, um, because I really don't feel like they're on the same field. Uh, favorite drama of all time has to be 24 and 24 is something you gotta binge watch. It's still on Amazon prime, I believe, but I, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of 24, it started in like the early 2000s, um, and it went all the way up until like, I think they even had a season that was in 2013. It was on a long time. Uh, and the concept of the show was that the entire season would take place over the course of one day. There'd be 24 episodes in the season, so each episode would be an hour of that day. And there'd just be this clock ticking that would do deep. Deep, deep, deep. And it was just a very iconic noise. But I remember binging that. That was really the only drama I've binged, like, hardcore. And it's just so entertaining. I mean, the premise is ridiculous that all of it, because there's literally so much that happens in one day. And it's like, it's a counterterrorism movie. Movie. TV show. It's counterterrorism, so there's a lot of, like, you know, action. There's a lot of crime-solving, interrogations, things like that. It's ridiculous to think that all of it is happening in one day and that it all kind of, you know, it all kind of adds up, but it's just a joy to watch, and it was always so much fun for me to watch it. I might watch it again, to be perfectly honest, because I j that show is unbelievable. Um. Anyway... So, 24, favorite drama, sitcom, without a doubt, all time. Any of you who know me know what I'm going to say. I'm guessing the only people listening to this are the ones that know me. But any of you who know me know what I'm going to say. Seinfeld. I feel, to me, and this is all subjective, you're allowed to pick your favorites. That's what's great about movies and television, and even music, that... You know, you're allowed to like what you're allowed to, what, what you like. You're allowed to like what you like. And I cast no shame on anybody who likes a certain thing. And even like me, who I love and adore Seinfeld and can watch it any minute of any day. I don't shame anybody who can't stand Seinfeld. I'm like, that's your opinion. That's fine. And we're all entitled to those opinions. So... Seinfeld is without a doubt. I've been watching it since I was a kid. And a lot of it goes over your head when you're a kid. A lot of it is very little, subtle, nuanced stuff. Um, and it's the only show where I can rewatch episodes and laugh just as hard as I laughed during, you know, the, the first time around that I saw the episode. Uh, so I've actually revisited Seinfeld recently, and I'm going back through it, and I'm just, I forgot. Not not that I forgot, because I love it, but it's, I forgot how unbelievably good the show is. Um, and how the little moments in that show, because it was something so different. It was kind of like this podcast, where I'm just sitting here talking about observations and everything. The Seinfeld show was basically... Jerry Seinfeld's act put into real life, right? And it was all these little things where it's just so hard to explain. The common moniker of the show is it's the show about nothing, right? That nothing happens. There's never any plot. It's just four miserable people going about their lives, and, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of OJ here. Sorry about that. 
Um, been talking a while. Oh, we're at 45 minutes. I'm going to try and wrap this up. But it's just these four miserable people. Um, and the thing that was so different about that show when it came on was, you know, sitcoms had taken place in New York before. There were plenty of that. And there were plenty of sitcoms. There was plenty of that. And there were plenty of sitcoms that were on TV in the 90s. The 90s was the golden age of the sitcom. You had Seinfeld. You had uh, Frasier. You had um, Friends started in the 90s, I believe. Uh, Everybody Loves Raymond started in the 90s. Fresh Prince was on in the 90s. You had all these things. And there are countless others that I'm missing, but you got the picture. But the thing that was so different about it is because every sitcom, for as funny as it would be, would always have a serious moment and would always have a moment where the characters would get into a fight and there's an issue, there's some kind of core conflict going on in an episode, and it was a standard way of writing a script. And then they make up, they hug, they talk things out. There's even sometimes crying on some sitcoms, which I love when I see that too because I can get emotional about it. Um, Fresh Prince was one of those shows that made me extremely emotional. I've seen every episode of that, and that was an unbelievable show. Uh, But Seinfeld spoke to me because there is never, in its entire nine-season run, there's like 160-something episodes, never, not one serious moment, ever. The characters never learn from their mistakes. They keep making the same mistakes over again. And that's one of the things that you have to do with a sitcom is the characters have to be searching for something that they that they can never attain because that's how you run a show like that. They, the characters have to have motivation, something they're trying to accomplish but can never get there. Um, Seinfeld, they don't have anything they're trying to accomplish. They can't get anywhere, and they don't want to get anywhere. And everything is just so irreverent. They don't care about... And, and it just spoke to me as somebody who laughed at a lot of things. I grew up in a house where we were we were making fun of... You know, we were making fun of people all the time, making fun of each other. Big Italian family. I got it, and I understood it on Seinfeld. Um, because it was just the little, like, minutia things. Uh, so I just I adore that show the characters never learn in fact there's one episode this is not spoiling anything you know if if you really were serious about the show you would have seen it by now but I encourage if you haven't checked it out please check it out it's on Hulu right now and come 2021 it will be uh, on Netflix that's why The Office and Friends are coming off um because I believe the number I saw was something like $500 million Netflix spent for the rights for Seinfeld. So they had to surrender the rights to some of their other bigger shows, which was like The Office and Friends and things like that. Uh, and this will be stuff we'll talk about, too, because there's stuff going on like in the streaming world, the entertainment world. Disney Plus is coming out soon. I hope to talk about The Mandalorian. That looks like a really good show, so I can't wait to start talking about that. Um but Seinfeld, yeah, there, there's one episode where George has been engaged to a woman for a long time. No, actually, not a long time. For pretty much the entirety of this season, that that was his uh, that was his storyline for the whole season was that he was engaged to this woman and he couldn't stand being engaged to her. And he realized, like two hours after he did it, that I should not have done this. This was a mistake, and that became a running joke throughout the whole season. And the woman, Susan, was her name. They're sending out wedding invitations, and she's licking the envelopes to seal them, and they turn out to be toxic envelopes, and she dies. She actually dies. They killed off her character. And there's this moment where they're standing around in the hospital, the four of them, and the doctor comes out, and he says, well, there's really no other way to say this, but she's gone. And I, I remember what the first time I watched that. I'm like, oh my God, there's going to be a serious moment on the show. And sure enough, 
George just looks at the doctor and goes, Dead? And it just, it, it took off, and it's just something like, well, I guess I don't have to get married now. And, and it's just so irreverent, and a lot of people had mixed reactions to that. Like, how could you do that? Susan, Susan, how could you kill off Susan and be so rude about it? But that's what I loved about that show. It never gave a shit. It could never exist in today's world. Um, I mean, it could, but people would have a problem with it. The the speech police would have a problem with it. Whoever the speech police are. I don't even know what that is. Anyway, we're coming up on the 50-minute mark. I'm going to wrap this up. Let's say, yes, there's going to be an episode tomorrow. Uh, I'll have more material, more topics to talk about. And then we're going to start getting guests in here as soon as possible. But I wanted to take this episode uh, to be a little intro into kind of what I'm going to be doing here. Um, I look forward to feedback. I hope I got to make you laugh or smile even a little bit. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed some of the commentary. I can't wait to uh, hear some of the reactions of the one and a half people that are listening. Um, and so, folks, uh, for today, this Wednesday, November 6th, ooh, almost, ugh, Wednesday, November 6th, I hope you all have a great day. Uh, and remember to... Always look on the bright side.